Hey, what's going on, world? It's me again, Ethan Smith, a.k.a. Big Sarge, large and in charge of my one and only self, taking myself up off the shelf to discover and find my greatest internal and eternal wealth. And I hope you're doing the same for yourself. Hey, Tim, what's going on, brother? Y'all know what it is. It's grunt speak. Speak grunt. Or we come through, we speak to you, and you speak back to me too. We get down in the chat and we talk about that, right? That's what we're going to do. But before I get into that, let me say this to you today. Public service announcement. This may not be for kids, but the kids will be blessed if they listen to this. I just need to let you know some of the words, the four-letter words that may be used may be sensitive for their ears. But it's okay if they hear most of the time we attempt to keep it clean. Well, I'll attempt to keep it clean because uh, it's just me. No Whiskey Charlie. Unfortunately, Whiskey Charlie had to work again this week, and he said he missed y'all. He loved y'all. You know his man love Thursday, so he got to say something crazy. But he said he missed y'all. He can't wait to get back. So next week, he should be right back on track and uh, getting back with y'all. But you know who it's for? 11B, 11 Charlie, 0311. You know how we do. Shout out to my brothers and sisters that fighting in combat wars every day too, right? But uh, what's going on, FJ? What's happening with you, brother? But you know, it's going to speak. We're going to speak on it today. And today I want to talk a little bit about relationships and friendships, man. Hold on. Before I do that, I got to get rid of this sweater because it's a little warm in here. Hold on. I thought I was good to go and ready to go. Ooh, look at that, the red, white, and blue, but it's in black and white, subdued, and gray. Anyway, so uh, drop down in the chat how you been doing. If you got a one-minute win, one-minute war, where you at with that, drop down in the chat how things have been going for you as we roll into 2022. We're about two weeks in. How have you been doing on your goal setting and your planning? Are you achieving some goals and some things that you had set for your life? How are those things going for you? Do you got that right? So I'm going to give you a second, man. Drop down in the chat. Tell me where you at. You doing good? You doing better than good? You got some things to work on or, uh, you know, you still kind of lost in the sauce, however you may feel, but we're going to help you get it right. That's what we do. We keep it real. Make sure you share this video. Make sure you go to the YouTube channel. Click the subscribe button on Speak Grunt. Make sure you click the little dingy bell so you can see every Sunday when this episode will be posted. But uh, share this video with a friend in need. As I like to say, share it with seven friends and seven strangers. As I give you all a minute to think about that one minute win, one minute war, what you've been up to, what's been going on for you as you're in the beginning of 2022. Has it been looking good for you? Hootie hoo. That's the old school outcast right there. While I'm waiting on y'all, I guess I'll go ahead and drop my one minute win, one minute war. Today felt like a rough day. It was a busy day. I was up early. I think I got up about 3.40, about an hour before my alarm clock went off because I wanted to sleep in. Yesterday was a long day and I get in a little bit of that too. But so my war today was just a rough day. It was a long day. I had a long day at work. I kind of worked hard today. And when I came home, I was a little bit frustrated in the way my dogs was going crazy. I had to do some repair work to the fence. I'm like, man, this is it. I'm going to get me a drink today. I know what I had to say. I know I said I was going sobriety in 2022. No alcohol, no weed for me. How about you? I'm like, I need to go get me something to drink, right? It was a battle. I was warring with myself. But the win in that is I was talking to myself as I was driving to get that drink. I started saying to myself, man, come on, think about this. Is this really what you want to do? What about the discipline you're looking to continue to build in you to help you get through? Is that really what you want to do? Now, it's not all bad if you don't overindulge, right? But how you going to feel after you drink and you go to bed tonight? How you going to feel when you wake up, right? So for me, I had to figure out how to get the victory. I had to figure out a way to win. You know what I had to do? I ain't going to even lie to you. 
This ain't even no alcohol. This is sparkling cider mixed with a little tart black cherry juice. And you don't believe me, I'll show you the bottles too. You can see like wine don't even kind of suds up like that right there. But uh, that was my win. I had the victory and I had, you know, I, I, I beat what I thought was going to beat me. And that right there was more of a celebration than actually having the wine that I felt like I needed at this time. So that was my win for me. That was the victory. I was warring with some things. I was battling with some things, but I came out with the win in the end. So what about you? What are you warring through? What have you held yourself accountable to do? Do you have anybody in your life? As I say, the importance of relationships, who are you surrounding yourself with? Do you have anybody in your life to help you keep it right? When you feel like those times you just want to give up and throw in the towel, who do you have that you can call on? Or is everybody always calling you? Sometimes I feel like that too. I feel like, man, I'm always calling everybody, but nobody's really calling me. Not that I'm complaining or I'm whining. Don't, don't take that at all from Big Sarge because I got enough going on. But who do you have in your life when those times where you feel like you can't do it, you can't get right? Who do you call? Let me drop something down here in the chat real quick so I can make sure y'all can see it. I'll just say a quick hello and uh, let's go. Because sometimes last week, Chris was talking to me. Shout out Chris Dykes. I know he'll probably jump on here soon. Last week, Chris was talking to me and he was saying that he couldn't see my chat. And he wanted to know if I could see his too. So if you could see my chat, what I just dropped down in there, give me a thumbs up or okay or who will. Give me something to let me know that my chat is going through. I know I can see my chat and I can see yours too, but I just want to make sure that it's going completely through. Mm -hmm. The importance of relationships and who we build them with. The importance of relationships and who we build them with. That's a tough topic right there. That's a heavy topic right there. Sometimes we may not think that the people we're around does us any harm or does us any good. Uh, please don't get that misunderstood. When you hear the phrase, you become the company you keep, you think about that from a team aspect or a platoon aspect or a company aspect about the individuals that you had the opportunity to see, to work with every day, how you built relationships with them, going through all type of all sorts of circumstances and obstacles in your life, some opportunities too to help you get right. But who are you building with? As I think about that right now, I want to touch on something from Sergeant FJ who sent me this in Facebook yesterday when I uh, came home. I was coming home back from San Antonio for a funeral for Captain Smart. And I'll talk about that a little bit, too, as I talk about the importance of relationships and who we deal with. But I was jumping on Facebook yesterday and I was reposting pictures of the guys from Bravo Company and some other individuals who was there at the funeral and things like that. And Sergeant FJ sent me this amazing message. When the warfighter left that day, there were no parades or endorsements, just a ride to catch. But what they didn't know was that their lives would be changed forever because they had been part of something greater. And greatness, no matter how brief, stays with the warfighter. Everyone dreams of a second chance, but the warfighter has lived it. Oh, we. That's deep. Everybody dreams of a second chance, but the warfighter has lived it. The importance of the relationships that you've been in can help you get through some of the wars that you've been through. Mentally, Definitely physically and spiritually, the war, the fighting, you may be the only thing that helps you get through. Putting on that full armor of God for my Christian brethren or the ones that read the Bible too, but putting on that full armor of God to help protect you, the war fighter in you. Understand that when you go through something so tragic or so extreme that you've already had a second chance at life, if you know what I mean. 
You ain't know your life will be changed forever, but your life is changed forever depending on who you around. We become the company we keep, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We become the company we keep. Let's see here what Sergeant FJ got for me. My war has been a year that I had a massive stroke. Lots of physical and occupational therapy. Mm, good to see you back up on your feet, brother, getting better. When is, it's 2022 and I'm house hunting and I'm about to go on this entrepreneurial journey and start my lawn care company, Grass Hero Lawn Care San Antonio. Oh, that's dope, brother. That's dope right there. I got a few partners in San Antonio and I'm pretty sure you got plenty of friends in San Antonio. We got some some fellow soldiers out there uh, in San Antonio. Actually, I was just there yesterday. I wish I'd have known that's where you was at. I would have reached out when we went to uh, Captive Smart's funeral over there at Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery. I was there yesterday. That's pretty dope, man. Grass Hero Lawn Care. I like that. I'm going to say congratulations. I'm going to say congratulations. All right, Chris, I got to see what's going on with this. We had this going on last week where I wasn't able to see your comments again. I don't know what's happening, my friend, but I'm going to be switching back and forth between Facebook, if y'all know what I mean, so I can make sure I get his comments in too and I can share these things with you. But back to Sarah and FJ. Hey, Chris, do me a favor. I'll go back and forth between Facebook if I need to in order to get your comments to make sure that they're coming through, and then we'll do it like that. That's what we'll do. So let me pull this page off and put it on its own so I can share it with you. So I can see that too. And uh, I'm going to blow this one back up. Oh, man, you stay on for Sam? Okay. That's what's up. I don't have to make myself big. As long as y'all can see me, I'm good to go. And I can read y'all comments. We'll continue to flow. So that uh that works for me. Chris, I got you opened up in a separate window. So I can see your comments over there, brother. If you want to keep on sending them that way. That works for me, and I figure it out. You know how we do. We adapt and overcome. That's what we used to. So I got you. I can see your comments right there. I appreciate that you tuning in. You and your wife, I appreciate that. Thank you all for coming through. Yeah, I didn't know you stayed on Fort Sam, man. I'll be probably back up that way next month in February. Uh, Sergeant Zuniga. Him and his uh, brother owns an airsoft company, Third Coast Airsoft. So I'll be up there next month in February playing in the airsoft, actually playing in the airsoft event and OC in the event. So I'm looking forward to that. I have to shoot you my number in the DM or in the chat, FJ, and uh, maybe we can get together sometime. You can actually come out probably. I'm pretty sure Z will like that. We can definitely touch bases. Oh, let's see here so I can get that full comment. I lean on you, Jeff Pryor, Bruce May, Zach Ryder, and John Lewis. I remember every last one of those guys, and that is a great group of individuals to lean on. I probably talked to Ryder more than any, any one of those two, but I see Lewis on here too. I haven't talked to, ooh, Sergeant May in a very long time. I don't even know if he remembers me, but I remember him, and I definitely remember Sergeant Pryor. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So that goes what I want to talk about too. Your friends. Who are your friends? The importance of the relationships and who we build them with. Yesterday, I had the unfortunate but fortunate experience, experience of going to a military funeral. It wasn't my first one, but this one was the first time that a actual commander that I known that I served under had passed. And it was it was a great service. I had the opportunity to meet his mother. I whipped up in the Smith, the soccer mom van. I parked and I was asking questions because it was multiple funerals going on. Hey, is he here for Captain Smart's video? And they're like, yeah, you can park right here. And I believe I was talking to his sister-in-law. He was saying, oh, it's his mother right there. So I got an opportunity to talk to her for a moment. 
share a moment, tell some cool stories that we did back in Iraq. Also, Chris, I got an opportunity to talk to the mom and let them know about the plaque that you're building. I actually think um, I meant to show her on my phone because I had it screenshotted, but I forgot to pull it up. And they're pretty excited about that. So no pressure, brother. I'm just letting you know I shared the word. I'm looking forward to when it comes to me and then I get it to them. I think that I know that'll be a great time. But being able to go to the funeral, being able to go to the funeral and see individuals and friends that I hadn't seen in a very long time. And if I don't catch your chat right away, don't worry about it because I'm going back and forth today. Um, cool. So being at the funeral yesterday, it gave me an opportunity to catch up to catch up with some old friends and some old battles that I hadn't had, that I hadn't had the opportunity to see. You know how it goes, especially in the National Guard. Okay, that's sweet. If it's done tomorrow, when I get it, I'll be grateful to get it. So, no pressure from me, man. Again, I thank you for doing this on behalf of myself, on behalf of the Texas Army National Guard, on behalf of Bravo Company First of the One Four One. I appreciate you, brother. I thank you for doing everything that you've been doing for me, even for supporting with Grunt Speak. So speak, Grunt. I appreciate that. But going with the uh, going to the funeral yesterday and having the opportunity to be around some friends, some brothers that I hadn't seen in a very long time. It was almost two dozen bulldogs there. Now, at first, I thought it was a small turnout at the funeral because I was expecting the place to be packed. But when Major Adams got up to speak, he talked about and he said something that, that baffled me. He said that that was the most individuals he had seen at a military funeral honoring a soldier in a very long time. Like the last couple of years, and not just because of COVID, but the last couple of years, the funeral services for soldiers have been scarce. And Bravo Company showed up and showed out. It was easily over two dozen of, just about two dozen of us there from HHC, well, from headquarters platoon, the first platoon, the second platoon, from the lowest ranking to the LTs who are probably, you know, captains now and our LTs who are all majors now, and the platoon sergeants, the platoon sergeant who is a sergeant major now and retired guys. And we came from all over Texas in honor of Captain Smart. And it was an amazing thing because it just brought his family so much joy. Somebody actually asked the question, who are all these people and why are all of them here? And it was simple because we all love Captain Smart because he was a great leader and a great man and he was a great friend. He knew each and every one of his soldiers. From the lowest ranking guy, I remember Big Rod posted in the chat how Captain Smart would catch them doing crazy stuff out back, and he would tell him, I'm gonna get you. But you know, when you see him, you straightened up and you got it together. You understand what I'm saying? And another thing, the weather turned out to be great yesterday because Texas weather has been a little bit crazy, anyhow. So, being amongst friends, you would have thought that we had just left the deployment, even though it would be 12 years this year right around august when we all separated you would have thought that we were all raised in the same neighborhood or in the same home the way we got along you would have never known that we came from different walks of life different parts of the world in order to do a job and we did our job right because the relationships that you build with the individuals who you deploy with, the relationships that you build with the individuals that you work with, the relationships that you build with the individuals that you live with, because your battle might not be your brother that was on a combat or a combat field with you. Your battle might be your wife. Your battle might be your kids. Your battle might be your 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 um your next door neighbor. I almost said your husband, but I don't know if any of y'all got husbands. Anyhow, it's a whole nother story. Don't get big, Sarge, you no trouble. No, it's don't ask, don't tell, and don't yell, and a whole bunch of other stuff. I ain't looking to disrespect nobody, but hey, to each his own, right? So anyhow, the relationships that you build 
those relationships can help you heal. We're doing it right here on Speak Grunt. I think about uh the relationship me and Whiskey Charlie have. The relationship that I have with Dykes, Chris. The relationship that I have with FJ. And we didn't serve in the pl same platoon. He was actually one of our instructors when I deployed the last time. But the relationships you build with individuals in a short amount of time can help free and relax your mind. And also the relationships that you get into can destroy you. Yeah, think about that for a minute. As I sip on my black cherry tart juice mixed with a white peach sparkling wine. And it turned out just fine. I didn't have to jump off the bandwagon today. And that's okay if you have to, but I fought through. But who are the people that's surrounding you? Are they, in, are they inspired by you? Are they inspiring you? Are they uplifting you? Are they helping you to get through? Me and Whiskey Charlie, we talk about some of everything from family to doing work around the house to what's going on with the VA to jobs. You know, we may not talk every day, but that bond is, is built. That bond is built. I support him. He supports me. I got my other brother, Tom Ayers, who most of y'all don't see, but he's somewhere back in the chat sometimes, and he's messaging me. We actually did a show the other day where he called me out to do some inspirational speaking at an open mic because he believed in me and what I do, and I believe in him too, and his DJing. Chris doing the plaque for Captain Smart because of the relationships that we built. Who are you building with? I've had friends that I've had for over 20 years, 30 years, who I don't talk to as much anymore. Not that the relationship is bad. It's just that we went our separate ways. We do separate things now. But the relationship which you build with the men in green, that's a totally different relationship. And you understand what I mean if you're watching this platform today. You understand what I mean. What do the relationships you have say about you? What is the relationship like with your significant other? Is that okay? Is that something you need to work on today? Because that's your right hand. That's your best friend. That, that's your right hand. And I, now I'm talking about your significant other if you married or your girlfriend. Because I know you get on here and we speak every Thursday, every other Thursday. You might catch it on Sunday. But how is the relationship with the people that you see every day? They need you to be okay. We need you to be okay. I need you to be okay. I don't just come on here and I know to play. I know we have fun and we have a good time. And we joke and things like that. But it's the people that's at home with you every day who's showing you that they're there for you. They got your back and we have to have they back. You need to ask yourself, where is my relationship at? And am I truly happy with that? Am I at joy with that? And if not, you ask yourself, how do I get it back? I'm talking specifically about you and your girlfriend, you and your wife, maybe you and your kids, maybe the relationship is broken from your parents. I've struggled and I've dealt with that too. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. I've struggled and dealt with that too. We become the company we keep and you better believe somebody is watching you, how you do, what you do, and their relationship is going to be affected by you. What I tell you, it was like 22 of us at Captain Smart's funeral yesterday based on a relationship that he had with us or something that he had to say. It's been 12 years just about since I've seen that man. 12 years since I've just even talked to that man. 12 years since I've been able to interact with that friend. But yesterday in San Antonio, I was able to go there and stand before his casket and pay my respects. 
not just because of the the u.s army that we both wore across our chest because we know it's plenty of people that wear the u.s army across their chest to wear cib or eib who done some negative things who i don't want around me what relationships are you building in your life how are you affecting change in the relationships to help somebody else get their life right how's your relationship with god or your higher power or your spirituality because until you get the relationship right internally first then the relationships that you encounter could often go wrong so for me i have to get the relationship right with me first internally and my spirituality so god can truly use me I used to have a relationship with weed and alcohol too because I felt like that's what I need in order to make it through. What are you using to get through when things are heavy on you? Who are you calling when things are heavy on you? Who are you reaching out to just to say, hey, I want to check on you. Are you okay today? My boy, Lil Carlos. Um, I know he's not on here because he's not on, excuse me, social media. Little Carlos, he was actually uh, deployed with us and he was yesterday, he was there at the funeral. And I, I call and check on him maybe three to five times out the year just to say, hey, love you, brother. How you doing? What's going on? And I made sure I had to reach out to him and let him know about the funeral or else he wouldn't have known because he's not on social media. After the funeral, me, him, the LT, uh, another LT, which both are majors now, and one of our other guys, old boss, Benoit, we all got together and we had lunch. And not only did we have a good time at the funeral with the 22, but that small collective group, the six of us, we just sat back and we told old stories too. And then we started a group chat in a text and talk about when the next time we need to get together and things that we want to do. Because the relationship that we built, it precedes you. It moves before you and it follows you too. People remember you based on what you do, based on what you say, based on how you carry your life every day. I remember Chris from being a hard charger back from Egypt, back from Alpha Company, FIBA, when I was just the buck private. I remember Sergeant FJ from Swift training us as we was getting ready to go over to Egypt that day. Whiskey Charlie was one of my guys, one of my soldiers. We hadn't talked in maybe four or five years before I pulled him over here to do grunt speak with me. Because the relationship that we have, it allow us to be free with one another. Are you in a relationship that's allowing you to freely be you? Or are you in a relationship that's crippling you? Come on, man. Come through, fall through in the chat. Let me check that. Yep. My wife said, when you're talking like that, ain't nobody saying nothing. That must mean you really in there. See, I used to get all worked up and busy and be like, oh, man, I don't see the little eyes with people watching. I guess people ain't feeling me. What type of relationship do I got? Do they see? I don't even care because I know I'm right where I'm supposed to be. You know what old boss Benoit said to me? He said he seen me and Whiskey Charlie doing grunt speak and having a good time. And he was wondering, the thought ran through his mind, what are these guys doing? Are they fucking drunk? I'm like, no, we weren't drunk. Maybe. Could have been. I don't know what show it was. It's possible. At that time, it's possible. But the things that we do is helping free and relax other people's mind. I get direct messages and Whiskey Charlie get direct messages too. And people continue to come through and talk about how some of the things we said has helped them overcome too. What relationships are you building? What relationships are you healing? What relationship do you have with yourself? Do you believe in yourself? Do you know that yourself inside is your greatest internal wealth? I don't care what you're going through. If you woke today, if you got breath in your body, it's something that God needs you to do. The mission ain't complete. Failure is part of the process to success. 
You were something then and you something now. You're just a different version of something. That's all. I don't run as fast as I used to, but that don't mean I'm not something. I don't do as many push-ups as I used to, but that don't mean I'm not something. You're not what you used to be, but you're a better version of you because you're a smarter, wiser, more knowledgeable you. Your body may not be able to do the things that you physically used to do, but your mind gets to control your body too. And guess what? Over a period of time, you can rebuild that too. But it starts with us rebuilding here and rebuilding here and putting the right people around us in our relationships. And when we hear them speaking in our ear, it comes in clear. You don't have to worry about what you, what you used to be. We all fall down sometimes, but we get back up again. One of my inspiration cards, where is that? Let me see if I got one right here, what it say on the back. When we talking about failure. Uh-huh. I know exactly what it say, but I want to share it with you and show you. I'm going to have to figure out how to way to send some of these to you. Here we go right here. Failure. Simply for me is I'm willing to fail an infinite amount of times in order to reach my success. Fail your way to your success. Fail your way out of the mess. Fail your way back to the top because it's only in failure that we learn. It's only in failure that we grow. It's only in failure that shows us what we are made of. Relationships fail. You've been broke up with before. You've had to leave a unit behind or a unit might have left you behind and you felt like a failure because you didn't get to do everything you wanted to do. But then you come into a new relationship and you come to a new unit and they put their arms around you and they love on you too. And then you start to believe, oh yeah, this is what I'm called to do. This is what I'm supposed to do. So I'm here to tell you, you could do anything you put your mind to. You just got to keep believing you and know that the failure that you feel like you're going through is only strengthening you. My brother, my friend, don't let the devil win. Don't let the negative mindset win. You are winning. You are actually building a plaque for somebody you never even knew based on a relationship that I have with you. You're not failing. You're failing your way to success. You fell in your way to success. Torres, somebody said, uh-oh. Uh-oh. You fell in your way to success. Uh-oh. I don't want to do that. Torres. Yep, my bad. When you're watching two screens, if you know what I mean, you want to click on everything. Make sure you ain't missing having anything to say to somebody. But anyway... That's why we build these type of relationships, right? Who are around you to help you get it right? Don't ever feel like there's anything wrong with uh, a fail. Because failure is part of the process to success. I failed a lot of times. I still feel like I fail sometimes every day. But I get up, I dust myself off, and I keep going anyway. I have to celebrate the things that's happening in my life. You got to be grateful for everything in your life that makes you that helps you continue to live your life right. Because if we face if we look at what's going wrong, we'll never feel like we are right. The failures in our life lets us know that God is still using us in this life. Some of the greatest people that we think about in life fail every day, multiple nights before they got it right. So what we used to be, as Les Brown say, used to bees don't make no honey. What we used to be can't stop where we're going to be. What we used to be cannot stop where we're going to be. If you are just willing to see a better version of you. I look back at my old self, too, when I was 22, 23, 24 and things like that. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get that body back. But I know I have to work for that. I have to watch what I eat now. I have to make sure I go to bed at a decent time to get some proper sleep. I have to feed new things to me. I have to have other friends around me to help build me. You steal something to me. You steal something to me. What does your relationship say about you? What do the people closest to you say about you? Again, Everybody that I seen yesterday, 
we couldn't believe that we was there for Captain Smart's funeral that day, but everybody had something good to say. That's why if you look on the picture on my Facebook, I'm smiling big that day because we talked about the good times. I don't really like to call them funerals anymore. I like to call them home goings because that's where you're going. It ain't for me to decide or put you in a heaven or hell. And my mindset and the way I look at it is positive as well because you're not here dealing with this mess. So I'm going to celebrate your life. That's the real test. What your friends going to say about you? Who going to come see you off to? Not that it may matter to you because you won't be there. But people still going to talk about you. People going to cry for you. People going to laugh. People going to miss you. But no, you, me, we get to decide the company that we keep. And if your company your friends don't support your dreams and your visions to help you grow through being the better version of you, then you need to remove them from you. And I don't care if they're a military brother too. If you're not looking to drink or smoke and they're looking to peer pressure you, then you got to let them go because you got to help somebody else get through. The mission ain't complete until I'm six feet deep. As I like to say, you got to run your race at your own pace. Because when you run your race at your own pace, you always come in first place. And if God allowed the sun to shine on your face, the mission ain't complete today. What you got for me down here, Chris? Oh, all right. I, I'm seeing like, like something finna pop up, but I ain't getting. Oh, okay, you still typing. I appreciate that. I don't have nothing over here from uh, nobody else today, so I want to make sure I don't miss nobody in the chat. I'm going back and forth with that. <clears throat> so, little Carlos, as I was saying, I called him out, and he came out, and we, of course, we had it. Yeah, before I get on little Carlos, let me go back to old balls, Benoit, the one who was asking me and Whiskey Charlie drunk when we was on the show. I had to ask him, was he drunk yesterday? Because we got some simple directions to meet the LT or where we was going to eat. And when you know, he took us all the way to the other side of town and the restaurant was right down the street from where we was at. I couldn't hold back. I say, man, I guess that's why we never let you lead in Iraq. How you get lost and we are supposed to go two minutes to the east and you took us 12 minutes to the west? What type of mess is that? But that's what friends do. They give you a little jab, they rib you, but they love on you too. After we had our fun and poked our little fun, we made it to the restaurant. I took the lead. Yes, I did. I took the lead. We made it to the restaurant and we had a good time because that's what friends do. They help to free and relax your mind. They help to get through stressful times. <clears throat> To be honest, I still have stuff going on. I still have the vivid nightmares, et cetera. I don't want to describe too much on a public forum. Hey, I completely understand that. And if you ever want to talk in a private forum, you know you got my number. And if you don't have my number, I will send it to you directly. Or you just send me your number here in the chat and we can talk about that. Because I've been there too. And I haven't had a nightmare in a good long time. So you trust and believe I'm going to be praying for you before I go to bed tonight. Because I know you can relieve yourself of that, too, and get back to doing what you love to do. Taking your Taekwondo probably to the, I don't know if you can go higher than the black belt you already at. But I don't know what levels, how many levels it goes up. But I'm pretty sure it's got to be some peace and relaxation in that. And to be able to teach somebody else to be able to give back. And I know you went through a lot probably with your dojo, too with everything that was going on, the coronavirus, when it first started out, that probably put a little hindrance on you. But it ain't too late. It ain't too late. We can always start over again. Sometimes God removes things because he wants new beginnings. And sometimes old stuff have to move out the way, just like we have to remace our old mindset every day. As the words say, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. 
We have to renew our minds every day and sometimes multiple times during the day in order to get our life right. I'm telling you, I used to carry I carry inspiration cards around with me. I passed out probably about 7,000 of these things since I've been back in Austin. But I used to carry my own little inspiration cards or things to motivate me inside my wallet. And I would pull it out two or three times a day. And I would have to read that to myself and, and learn to build a better relationship with myself, regardless to what my negative mind was saying, regardless to what my negative friends were saying, regardless to what the war and the nightmares were saying. I had to reprogram my mind to get to this point in time. I had to. So I feel you. I feel you. But just like we had those vivid nightmares, we can have vivid and elusive dreams, lucid dreams. And we can have everything that we ever thought about, ever dreamed about. But we just have to watch what we focus in on. We have to watch who we surround ourselves with. If the people in your life ain't speaking to you about how to get your life right and they're living their life right, those are not the people for you nor me. We family. This ain't just about no army. We family. You my brother, not just in arms, but you my brother in Christ and my spirituality. And that goes for everybody that's watching this show. Whether you never like, subscribe, share, I don't care. I'm still going to do what I'm called to do because God told me, Ethan, this is what you're supposed to do. It's people out there that needs to hear from you, specifically from you. It's somebody out there that needs to hear specifically from you, from Chris, from FJ, from Whiskey Charlie, from Lil Carlos, Tamez, Lounsbury, Zuniga, all these other friends that I had. We specifically had to hear from Captain Smart in order for us to get to certain parts of our life. Make sure the people around you want the best for you and they're going to hold you accountable too. not to belittle you, not to tear you down, not to even check you, but to check you when you are doing dangerous things to you. That's what I expect my crew to do. Don't let me wander around aimlessly. If you see me not being positive or speaking something like this, check on me because that means I'm going through. And I'm going to do the same for you. But here's what we got to do. We have to reach out too, because nobody is a mind reader for you, nor me. But a real friend, he has empathy. And he's sympathetic to what you're going through. Bullshit about men don't cry. That's a lie. I send it back to the pits of hell too, because that's where we get stuck where we be at, constantly going through. That's why that number is still at 22. That's why that number is still at 22. Soldiers committing suicide every day because they feel like they couldn't, nobody would listen to what they had to say. They had no real friends around their way. They had no real friends around their way. We have to tune in. We have to tune into our heart. We have to tune into our mind so we'll be able to help somebody else when they're going through their tough times. Everything that we do and everything that we say is not for everybody, but somebody needs it. Everything that we do and everything that we say is not for everybody, but best believe somebody needs it. It has to come from specifically from you. That's God's plan. That's what you were ordained to do. You don't have to be a minister to preach, to give somebody a word, to speak. Just to give a wink might change a person's life. Might change a person's life, but we have to be willing to deal with those things that haunt us in the day, that haunt us in the night, that makes us feel like we cannot live our life. Shout out to my man FJ. He said he had a stroke last year. Now he's getting ready to open up a business. We have too many reasons why we could throw in a towel, but here's the thing. Take that towel and wipe off the blood, sweat, and tears and say, B.I., I'm still here. So that means there's something that I'm supposed to do. And maybe what I'm supposed to do ain't meant for you. But what I'm supposed to do gonna come through to the people that need it too. 
because it's friends that believe in me. It's friends that need me. It's friends that I need too in order to get through. Come on, man. I'm, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Let me read you another inspiration card while I take this tactical break to read this message. PSP, promote, sell, push yourself. Promote, sell, push yourself sometimes. Uplift yourself. Be your own cheerleader. Believe in yourself and push yourself to be great. Oh, no. Oh, okay, I'm good. Let's go over here. Boom. I reach out all the time. I tried to consult with Eric Daggs before because he was my oldest daughter's cousin. I recruited him. I know. I remember that. I remember you talking about that when that when that took place. And you wasn't the, I won't say you wasn't the only one. I heard several people had reached out to him in that way. I would say things on Facebook too. But you know what? It's something that we, it's something that I went through feeling like I wanted to end it too. But I had to be able to speak out in order to get through. And God rest his soul. God bless the dead. What we have to do is see our legacy through. We have to continue to carry the torch for our brothers and sisters in arms. And reaching out sometimes is, is not even for them. Sometimes it could be for us. It's twofold. Because if it's something that spoke to your heart, just like you do these amazing plaques for all the soldiers that you know of in the 125 that's lost, and a lot of people not doing that, that's something that even though it could cause you some pain and some turmoil sometimes when you see in the families, because that has to be hard on you, it still brings you joy knowing that you was able to bring something to them that helped them get through, to let them know that somebody is still honoring their loved ones. That's a powerful thing. Don't ever stop reaching out what you do because you reaching out to somebody else. I'll reach out to you. I'll reach out and check on you and see how you doing. It's twofold. What goes around comes around. Some plant the seed, some water the seed, and somebody else have to harvest it. As a collective, as a group of individuals, we definitely have to learn how to build together and stick together through any weather because that was the only way we was able to make it through the military and accomplish the missions that we had to do. You could count on the guy to your right and to the left of you. That's why I say this thing will be. Now I want it to be, will be a platform that the world will see, a nonprofit that truly takes action and creates change. People will know the name Speak Grunt and not just for public recognition and all that bullshit because of the healing that we're doing in the soldiers and in their families too. That's my mission to you. That's my mission. That's what God gave me. Memorial Day, December, the, I mean, uh, Memorial Day 2020. The video on my Facebook. You go back, take a look. Seriously. We got to do this thing together. Who are your friends? Who are you surrounded with? Who are you a friend to? Are the things that you're doing with the people that's around you building you or breaking you? Are they building you or are they breaking you? I mean, that black cherry juice with the sparkling uh, peach apple cider. I am happy that I had that. I am real. I really am happy that I had that because I was able to beat my mind again this time and tell him I don't need this. I know I felt like I was in the funk and that was my fallback. That was my go-to. Either get me something to drink or blow some weed too. Nope. 
I ain't going to do it. I made it through. I ain't going to say it was easy on me, but I'm happy to tell you that I was able to do it too. You could do anything you put your mind to, man. I believe in you. I'm talking to everybody out here that's seeing this today, or you're going to see it on Sunday. You can do anything you put your mind to. You just got to believe in you. And if you start to think it, if you start to seek it, if you believe it, it will come true. You can kick whatever drugs that they're giving to you. You can kick whatever bad habits that you're going through. We can kick whatever nightmares and false prophecies too. But it starts with you. It starts with me believing. And it's me and my wife saying the G-O-D, believing what he's saying to you, knowing that it's okay for you to be real to heal because it's some friends that's counting on you. It's some people out there that need to hear your story too. Your voice is going to come through in magnitudes and people will be blessed by you. The mission ain't over yet. The mission ain't over until we gone. So we six feet deep or we burned up in ashes. You got a friend in me like Buzz Lightyear. You got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. That's all I know. Okay. I didn't get in to sing. Got in to speak. But no, seriously. My wife is looking at me crazy. Who are you building your relationships with? Who are you building your relationships with? Who are you surrounding yourself with? Do your relationships support you and your dreams? The people you're around, do you support them in their dreams? I thank you for supporting me in my dream and my vision to tune in to speak grunt every week not knowing what madness I might say, not knowing if it's going to be something serious or it's going to seem like it's all for play. I thank you for supporting my dream. God said, if there would just be one, I got one, two, three, four, five, six people that regularly come through to see what me and Whiskey Charlie going to do. People believe in you. You got friends that love you and you got friends that don't want to see you make it through because they don't want to make it through. And here's what hold true. Don't ever feel like you leaving nobody behind. Sometimes they stop walking with you. I'm going to let that one sink in. Don't ever feel like you leaving anybody behind. Sometimes they just stop walking with you. You know how I know it's true? Because when the army was taking a PT test and you have a friend who don't run so good and you're trying to help him get over this mess, it comes to a point in time where you keep running and they keep stopping and you have to say, okay, I got to keep going or else I fail too. You didn't leave them. They stopped on you. If you elevating, your friend should be elevating too. But if you continue to elevate and they keep pulling at you, like, what you going to do? Why you going to leave me behind? Them not your friends. They just taking up and wasting your time. Because you want to be continuously growing in life. So what? You failed at something. You failed last night. You failed tonight. But fail your way to success. If it's five years, ten years, and you still dealing with the same mess, take a look to your right. Take a look to your left and say, who's my friends? Who's hanging out with me? When you start to change your life and you start to set your mind free, then you'll really see who rock with you and who support you. I'm telling you, this fake alcohol came through today, bro. Sparkling wine and black cherry tart juice. Who? I won. You can win too. I believe in you. Uh-oh. Yeah, I ain't going to hold you long either. Well, I got about two more minutes before I end it. So please drop down in the chat and tell me how I can help you. What can Speak Grump Big Sarge do to help you get through? Because here's what you could do for me. Keep on coming through. Keep on dropping your comments down in the chat and share this video too. Mm. 
I'm looking for something specific that I want to share with you. And when I put it up to the camera, if you're not on your phone to watch the video, how you watching this video, I want you to take a picture of it too. No, I wish that was me. I don't remember if you asked me that. I think that you might have. I think that was Sergeant Umana, the taller African guy. But nope, I didn't lose a shoe. I usually was the guy that smoked push-ups and sit-ups, and then I boloed or bombed a run. I could sprint, but the two miles used to kick my ass, okay? Or I kicked my own ass because I didn't want to push myself that hard to last back then. Nope, I wish I could lay claim to that one. I ain't never won a PT. I ain't never won in the PT race. Oh, no, 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 no. I ain't never came in first place. And I ain't going to do it before I die, I don't think, because I'm done with the Army. So not this time. I don't have that card that I wanted to share with you. Hey, look at that. Watch me come through on my... Uh, on my my board okay it's picture time if you got your phone if you're not using it if you're on your computer if you got a second to take a pause on this i want you to take a picture of this one inspiration card that i'm gonna hold up for you it clearly says funeral Yep, I was at one yesterday. It clearly says, uh oh, that don't say funeral. That says show up to blow up. God dog it. This is some cards that I messed up, y'all, that printed out wrong. It says show up to blow up on the front, but the message on the back is for funeral. So I'll show you the back and I'll read that to you. But the front of the card says funeral. And people often ask me, why do I have a shirt and a card that says funeral? Because I think about it like this. Yesterday, we laid Captain Smart to rest. And most of the time when you go to a funeral or to the grave site, most people don't go back. That's it. That's it. They end that day, that night. They cry. They talk about it. You don't go back unless it's on a special occasion. So I decided to take a word that was so negative and turn it positive. And I simply started to say this. Every morning, have a funeral. Bury doubt, fear, disbelief, unforgiveness. I like to drop anger in there as well, etc. Whatever else you need to let go of and choose life. Every morning, have a funeral. Bury doubt, fear, disbelief, unforgiveness, depression, anger, fill in the blank, and choose life. That's my message. That's my mission for you. That's what I want you to do. Every morning when you wake up, have a funeral. Make that negative word your new bitch. You know how it go. I don't mean no disrespect to nobody, but as men, when we meet a new lady, not calling her a B, we treat her very nice and we choose life to get our life right. You put on your nice cologne, you cut your hair, your nice clothes and your nice shoes. You wine her and dine her too. You choose to live a good life for her. So I want you to bury those negative things that's hindering you. Bury those negative things that's attempting to stop you from doing what you know you called to do. So every morning, have a funeral. Bury doubt, fear, unforgiveness, depression, sadness, madness, anger, and choose to live your life. Live out your hopes, live out your dreams, live out all those crazy things that you've imagined to be successful in. And then make sure you share that with a friend. Because no one man's an island. It's so much easier when you can do it with somebody else who believes in you and you believe them too. 
that's how we were able to make it through some of the toughest times in our life. A lot of times when one of our loved ones take their own life, they do it all by themselves and they do it out of sight. The enemy wants to isolate you so he can defeat you. Remember what I talked about last week when we went and fought? We fought three to one odds. You're not in this fight by yourself. Share it with somebody else when you're going through. And I promise you God will bring you through. But you got to bury those negative things that's hindering you. This is what real friends do. This is what real brothers do. We support you. We love on you. We push you to be the best version of you because we know you capable. And that goes for everybody that's hearing the sound of my voice today. Shout out again to my man, Whiskey Charlie, who out there doing his thing at the Home Depot. Well, it's nine o'clock. It's time to rock and roll and let y'all go. Go get some sleep because I know my alarm going to go off, but I'm going to beat it up, though. I'm going to beat it up, though. Plan on beating up your day tomorrow. Plan on taking the victory. The Bible says a good man falls seven, a good man falls seven times, but he rises up again. I, I butcher scripture, so you could go look it up for yourself. But I'm pretty sure you heard it before. A good man, a just man, he falls seven times, but he rises up again. And that seven was just the number they put out there. Every time that you fall and God happens to fall on you in the morning by waking you up, there's something that you are supposed to do. So here's what I need you to do. I need you to speak, grunt, until the negativity leaves you and the positive things that you see in your life begin to come true. Yes, it's a process too. I had to go through. I'm still growing through some of these obstacles too. But trust me when I tell you, you could do anything you put your mind to if you just believe in the God inside of you. You just believe in the king inside of you. If you want to look back at anything in the past, look back at the things in the past who asked you whooped. Look back at the things in the past that you've overcome. And as David Goggins say, reach down in your cookie jar and pull that out when you're having a tough day. You are already part of the 1% to join the military, part of less than the 1% to join the infantry. And Chris, specifically, you a ranger, so you less than the one, less than the 1%. You like a point, a percent. You can do anything you put your mind to. No matter what others may think of you, no matter what others may think of you, know that it's okay to just be you. Now this time, for real, I'm it. I'm done. That's it. I'm through. No more message for you. So I'm going to close how I do. This has been Grunt Speak. Speak Grunt too. Where I come through and I speak to you and I hope that you speak and you share with me too. And that's what we do. And we help one another fight our way through. Because as long as you got life in your body, God, Buddha, Allah, the universe, whatever spirituality you believe in, wants to use you and he will send some friends your way to help you get through the tough times every day but here's what we have to do we have to take responsibility and we have to reach out too because the only person or the only being that can truly read you is the god inside of you if you 11 b you 11 charlie 0311 2 this message was specifically, this show was specifically created for you. But here's what we wind up having to do. Share it with the rest of our brothers and sisters in arms because they need our help too. And that's what we do because we true blue and infantry get everybody through. Big Sarge, large and in charge of my one and only self. Taking myself up off the shelf, taking my God up off the shelf, out the box to find my greatest internal for my eternal health and wealth. Y'all have a blessed and wonderful night, man. I will see y'all 
next time. Peace. I'm out. <laughs>